Hello, and welcome to episode 34 of the Liberland Show. I'm your host, Adam J. Carswell. Today, I'm joined by a returning guest, Tom Walls. I almost said Tom Woods. <laughs> Tom Walls, <laughs> the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Liberland. Tom, thank you for coming on the show today. Hey, thanks, Adam. It's great to be on the show again. Uh, happy July 4th. Happy Independence Day to everyone who celebrates it. And, um, you know, it's great to be on again. Yes, that's right. Happy 4th of July to everyone that celebrates it. Yeah, I think today's a good day to be recording about Lieberland just because we've had some historical things recently as well. With that being said, I kind of want to flip it right over to you here now, Tom. About, what, maybe two weeks ago, uh, not even, you were in Uganda on behalf of Lieberland for a pretty big event that took place. A lot of ideas and, and new things within the country came into form during that experience. So before we start diving in, I guess, just give us your overall general takeaway from the event from a high level standpoint. Well, um, Liberland uh, organized a conference in Kampala, which is the, the capital or just outside of the, the capital on Lake Victoria uh, for both people uh, in Uganda, the Ugandan government, and uh, people from other African countries as well, including Liberland representatives. We have a very strong team in Uganda, and we have very, uh, very uh, – qualified, high caliber representatives in other African countries. So we had people from uh, Congo, Zimbabwe, South Africa, Tanzania, all over Africa come to meet with us. And actually, we, we had people from outside Africa too. We had uh, business people and representatives from Europe as well and United States. So we had a very well attended conference in, in Uganda there. Uh, basically, the point was to introduce ourselves to Uganda to explain the business and investment opportunities that Liberland could bring to Uganda, which we're actually already doing, and to meet with officials and meet with people in the, in the tech industry and uh, other businesses to talk about two-way trade between Liberland, which is based in Europe, and, of course, uh, Uganda. So uh, it was really, really, we felt very welcome there. We uh, we're welcomed at the VIP lounge at the airport. We got a police escort to our hotel. All right. And we met with quite a few people from uh, different ministries of the government as well as business leaders. So we had a great time there. And the people were just amazingly wonderful and welcoming and engaging and smart. And they already, you know, checked Liberland out. And uh, they had an, already had an idea of what we were about, what we're doing, the challenges we face, the opportunities we have. And, and they were very serious and very interested and very engaged uh, with us. So we had, a, we had a wonderful time. Yeah, and, and one thing that stands out to me that I find very intriguing between you know, Uganda and, and Africa, I would say at large, is from what I've seen in the news the past couple of years, there's a lot of growth and a lot of potential in regards to the future of Africa. Um, a lot of people are very bullish on the economy there and all of the opportunities that basically aren't. I say being taken advantage of yet, maybe there's a better way to, uh, to say that. There's a lot of potential with Africa and there's a lot of potential with what we have going on at Liberland. So do you see a lot of unity there on that, that type of common ground that we have? Oh, definitely. And the opportunities are so great. And um, they, you know, they welcomed us with open arms and they, they sat down with us and talked with us seriously about um, exporting stuff from Uganda to Europe. You know, of course, we have a free trade zone at Apatine. And we'd like to use that to its fullest potential. We could export things like, like tea or textiles or other products from Uganda into Europe uh, through the free, free trade zone. And then we could also steer investment in Uganda. We, have, uh, we had a couple of folks come, uh, entrepreneurs and, and investors come who are already associated with Liberland who are already investing in projects in, in Uganda. We have a guy who's a really innovative guy. He's actually a German guy, but he's got projects in Croatia, in Asia, and now Africa. He's got very interesting high-tech concepts for, for agricultural irrigation. And he had actually met with the president, President Museveni of Uganda, uh, uh, like two weeks before our conference. And he came back as part of the Liberland delegation. So we've already got people uh, doing just that. And we were very pleased at seriousness and, and attention that we were given, you know, that they allowed us, you know, to, to 
present and, 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 and speak our mind, discuss what we have to offer. And we were really, really happy about that. Yeah, and it's, it seems as though a fire has sort of been sparked between Liberland and Uganda. One thing that I've noticed a lot of individuals get confused, and I'm even a little bit guilty of this as well, is for whatever reason, we always kind of say, oh, Africa. You know, we treat Africa like it's all one country. <laughs> and, right. uh, you know, that's not necessarily the case. How do you see Uganda impacting the rest of the African nations? Well, uh, Uganda is relatively stable. Of course, they, you know, not without their uh, turbulent history with Idi Amin and Milton Obote, pretty much strong men and did what they wanted. They've uh, been pretty stable under President Museveni, and, and they have a relatively free market economy in comparison with, with other African countries. You know, they're also part of the East African Union, which includes Kenya, Tanzania, I believe Rwanda, Burundi, and they sort of have a, a free trade zone going on there. Of course, they have many hurdles to overcome and many trade barriers to to do away with. More and more free trade is characterizing Africa, African economies. They're realizing that it's better to trade with your neighbors and gain mutual advantage rather than trying to make everything yourself. You know, we're seeing actually one interesting thing we saw when we were there, the Chinese have a lot of investments going on there. Mm roads and things. Now, I don't know. I mean, there's different takes on this. You know, you've got people like Professor George Aite from originally from Ghana. You know, his his advice is to beware the dragon, you know, uh, Mm because there's a lot of strings attached to their investment. And a lot of African countries are actually going into debt uh, and giving concessions to the Chinese, like mining rights and, and resource rights that is basically signing away things that they that they have. They probably should be a little more mindful of what could be considered neo-colonialism on the part of, of China. So that, that was an interesting concern. The people we talked to were aware of that, and they're trying to wean themselves off of Chinese investment. Like we went to Vice President Bogie Wozniak and I and uh, Pavel Dudek. We all went to Murchison Falls National Park, and we saw that, you know, huge construction sites with, uh, you know, a Chinese foreman and African workers just, you know, building roads through the area. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that they will give a certain amount of funding to this or that, you know, kind of win the goodwill of, of Ugandans. But again, you know, there's, there's some cautions that, that should, be, should be taken there. So right. um, we want a two-way street. We want Ugandan products and African products in, in Europe and the rest of the world. And we want to bring technology and other kinds of investment and innovation to, to there. One, one thing I'd like to talk about a little bit, I have a background in tourism, as mm-hmm. we've talked about a little bit on previous shows. Uh, I, we met the Minister of Tourism, uh, Mr. Nice. Uh, Godfrey Chiwanda, and uh, he's a great guy. And I talked about, I, I put together group tours to Uganda several years ago. I didn't go. This is my first time in Uganda. It was a real pleasure learning about it and, and putting together group tours for people to go and discover the natural wonders of Uganda. And I mentioned the Murchison Falls National Park. They also have other parks where you can see gorillas, chimpanzees, uh, you know, the the big five African, you know, land mammals that people like to go on safari and see. Uh, We saw elephants, lions, giraffes, hartebeests, wildebeests, bush bucks, you you name it in in the national park. And it's just a really amazing resource. And Uganda is trying to uh, preserve that. We also went to a private rhino sanctuary, which we gave a donation to and saw actual rhinos. They were declared extinct in the 80s because people just killed them for their horns. L- uh, luckily, we're trying to bring them back with you know individual rhinos donated from American zoos, from Kenyan zoos, and now they have a rhino population, which they like to propagate and reintroduce in some of the areas where they were once native. Wow, yeah, and I, I recall you sharing some very beautiful pictures from the trip as well within the Lieberland community. Oh yeah. I'm still posting them. I just posted <laughs> a bunch this morning and uh, there's more to come. I, I take hundreds of pictures when I, when I go on a trip. So yeah, I, I, I don't recall. I think I saw a few safari pictures, but for whatever reason, the one that comes to the top of my head, I think was a photo that you or someone had taken from the venue of where the event, where the Lieberland event took place. Uh-huh. It, it just looked spectacular. Sun was shining, blue skies, grass was cleanly cut. You know, it was, it was to me, it was just beautiful how, again. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> Uganda's a beautiful country, and we, we just love being there. You know, it's, I, you know I, I got to Dubai after 
leaving Uganda to come back. I, I wanted to go back to Uganda because <laughs> nice. It was about 10 degrees cooler than it is here in Florida. The people were wonderful. And, you know, just the natural beauty is, is just so enticing and, and amazing. So I definitely going back there at some point. Actually, me, we met in London after the summit with a number of people from the government, from the foreign office and folks from the Buganda tribe, whom we also met with. We met with a prince from the Buganda tribe. It's the largest tribe in Uganda. Mm-hmm. Uh, we met with people from, from the presidential office, from the foreign office, minister of tourism. Uh, we sat down with a general, a major general. We met the chief justice of Uganda, who uh, was basically their John Roberts. Uh, yeah. uh, we were invited to a wonderful wedding by our represent, African representative, Olivia Marembe, and her cousin was getting married. And uh, she's fairly well connected there, so a lot of VIPs were there. We uh, were taken to dinner by members of parliament, really, really keen interest in, in Liberland. Of course, they first they didn't know much about us, but they looked into us. And after they met us, they were really, really interested in, in, in working with, with Liberland and, and everything we have to offer. Oh, uh, one, one thing I, I cannot neglect to mention, sure. I arranged a little meeting, uh, actually not little, uh, a meeting with the <laughs> Uganda Students for Liberty and the ALID, Action for Liberty and Economic Development. That was a group of about 40 young people we met with in Entebbe at another hotel. And Pavel Dudek and I presented to them uh, both on startups, on liberally, and on how to run a business and things like that. These, these guys were so smart eager to exchange ideas with us, and we're still in contact with quite a few of them. That was another great event that we had on the side that I arranged personally awesome. uh, with, with some guys there, and just, just wonderful people, wonderful young people, very talented, very eager to start businesses, very eager to give back to their community. Uh, there's a number of charities which we want to hook up with the Liberland Aid Foundation, there's a group called Save, Save Children with Autism Uganda, which we're thinking about working with. There's another group that works with underprivileged women and helps them uh, generate economic activity by making handicrafts and bags and things that they can sell and earn money and give them a platform to do that, whereas they would otherwise not have one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, we may, I, I also said we made a donation to the private uh, rhino sanctuary up uh, by Murchison Falls. Murchison Falls was also spectacular. It's another great waterfall that um, uh, runs into the Nile. And we took a Nile cruise uh, to get there. We saw hippos, Uh crocodiles, all sorts of bird life. Uh, Amazing, amazing stuff. So, so many aspects of Uganda. I mean, I could talk about it for a week. (laughs) How wonderful it was. I hope you'll get the chance to go there sometime. Absolutely. Um, I'm I'm getting sold uh, minute by minute here. Yeah, yeah. We also... um, a director from the Uganda Investment Authority spoke to our conference, and he was very keen on technological aspects of, of kind of investment we can do. There's a, a company called CoinPisa. It's kind of like PayPisa. It's like that's a service they use to do payments on the internet, and uh, they're getting into crypto. Uh, we're, there's actually a blockchain conference at the Sheraton in Uganda, and there's actually another blockchain conference where the president is speaking, I think, uh, happening as we speak. Uh, in wow. Uganda. Okay. They're very keen on, on getting into the, the crypto revolution, and uh, we hope to help them with that. Absolutely. So with, all of, with everything that we just covered, what do you foresee as perhaps the ne- next most actionable step between Lieberland and Uganda to continue growing the relationship? Yeah, we'd like, we're looking to sign memorandum of understanding with Uganda, uh, looking at passport acceptance, official you know, steps towards diplomatic recognition. Of course, mm-hmm. the, the, those are the steps that are necessary prior to full diplomatic recognition. Of course, you know, Liberland has its challenges. We also have our opportunities and we're learning, you know, a very small but dedicated team and we're, we're you know, process. They offer, certainly offer to help us uh, introduce us to other African countries as well. So I think one of our next uh, focuses will be Tanzania, which is right next door. And we had mm-hmm. quite a few people from Tanzania attend our conference. So, and we have a good team there uh, nice. for Liberal Land. And uh, our Olivia, whom I mentioned earlier, uh, just went to Tanzania to talk about putting together a Liberal Land business forum there. Looking at going back to Uganda, looking at going to Tanzania, looking at other countries, we would like them to help us open the door to other African countries. And we, you know, we feel there's so much potential there. 
Um, who I'm curious, who sourced the initial connection for us between Uganda and, and Lieberland? Was that Olivia? Or? Yeah, well, she sent me an email uh, in the foreign office. You know, we get thousands of emails a, a week and hundreds a day with people asking about citizenship, passports, and all that stuff. But Olivia's email was very sincere, and, you know, I had a prior interest in Uganda. So I took the time to respond to her thoughtfully and put her in touch with Secretary of State Tariq Abbasi. Olivia lives in the UK as well, so she was able to meet with him personally. They hosted together a diplomatic event in London where uh, we had a number of diplomats come and other interested parties. So she has helped with African outreach quite a bit. Absolutely. And for everyone listening, if you want to get a little bit more of an idea who Olivia Marembe Musisi is, she was featured, I'm not sure exactly which episode number it was, but it was the late, late 20s, maybe 20 through, or 25 through 30. So go ahead and, and take a look at her story as well. She's, she's doing some big things, as you can see. But Tom, we're coming to the end here. Uh, I guess any, any final remarks or closing remarks on what we've discussed today? Well, uh, people shouldn't overlook Africa, and and particularly East Africa. There's certainly a lot of potential, both uh, economically and for liberal and uh, diplomatic terms. So, but we'll definitely be going back at some point, and uh, we treasure the relationships that we we forged there, and uh, we look forward to working with them on on some really, really interesting and and, uh, worthy projects. Awesome. All right, guys, this has been episode 33 of the Liberland Show. Excuse me. This has been episode 34 of the Lieberland Show. We were joined today by Tom Walls, the Minister of Foreign Affairs. I'm your host, Adam J. Carswell, and thank you for tuning in. Tom, thank you for joining us. Outstanding, Adam. Thank you. We will catch you in the next episode. Guys, if you enjoy listening to The Lieberland Show, be sure to check out my own personal podcast called Dream Chasers. On Dream Chasers, we interview individuals with supernatural amounts of potential based on early success in their careers. Go ahead and do a web search on it. Again, my name is Adam Carswell, Adam J. Carswell. Go ahead, type in Dream Chasers, and it should pop up for you to listen there on any platform, YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, iTunes, etc., Thanks for tuning in to the Lieberland Show, and we will catch you in the next episode. Thanks.